Hey guys, it's me Nina and I'm back with a video. It's been a very long time. I actually have been recording little clips, but I haven't been uploading them. I'm planning a video for later on, but I've just been super busy. I accepted a new teaching position out in New York. I taught for the DOE, Department of Education out in the city for six years full time. I was in there seven years because I also had a teaching um, residency and I started my first year out on Long Island so um, I'm not gonna give specifics for privacy but I got a Instagram DM because I've been posting my teacher outfits and it's from somebody who looks like they're in the Department of Education who had questions about that so um, this Q&A teacher answering your teacher questions video may not be super helpful if you are on Long Island but um, if you're in the city, I think definitely, and I think some of it will overlap. But um, the, I don't know if the person who asked me these questions wants to be private, so I won't say their name, but I will start to go through their questions. And let's start with question number one. The process of open market, can, you, um, can your principal see if you went on it? And there is actually a Facebook group for DOE teachers, I will, insert the name of it right now um because i cannot remember it off the top of my head and i think you have to answer certain questions in order to be approved and you have to be in the doe but i remember that at some point somebody said that they can't but basically your principal can kind of find out because principals have networks they know each other so if they you know if I'm a principal of so-and-so school and I'm friends with someone from another school and I see that an applicant's coming in and they have that, my friend's, my friend's school's, you know, uh, my, my friend's school and their, their resume, I may ask like, oh, like this person, are they good? Are they not good? And that may out you. I will say that, um, that the two times I applied, one was as a, as a teaching resident and I kind of um, went through a different application system it's not open market it's for first-time teachers and I believe it opens a little bit sooner so when I went through that the school I had my residency at was really surprised that I had applied and accepted an offer and had actually told me like you never accept until you talk to us just let us know that you got the offer um, but the school I was last at um, like well actually I was at three different schools so uh, the school I was last at while transferring within the DOE because coming to Long Island there is an application system called OLOS so it's completely different so there's no way they would know but while I was um, still in the city the the principal when I let him know he was also really shocked and you know, tried to convince you to stay and whatnot but um, yeah he had no idea and I think that most people would not know unless um, they know somebody or something like that. So you can have privacy. I will say that my last principal was angry with me that I let her know kind of last minute that I was applying, but I've talked to other people about this and it is kind of a private thing. My school was accessing, so I think that was another factor of it. And it is kind of a gray area because at the end of the day, like I care about you as a person, but I need to watch out for myself in my job. You know, um, my, I can be fired any minute, and me, like literally can be accessed. Um, but obviously, like people are important. If you have an admin who you really have a good connection with, you don't want to put them in a bad position. But everyone's always told me like wait to say anything until you know you want to leave or have an offer and so on. Okay. Um, next question. What is it like for you during the end of the year? So I think this can apply for um, diff both categories if you're on Long Island or if you're in the city. But I think it's always strange because you know it's ending, the kids know it's ending, but it can help if you have some sort of end of the year assessment. On Long Island, I have finals and I think that makes a big, 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 big change. When I was teaching in the city, I had a regents exam, but for my eighth graders, when I taught eighth grade English last year, it was hard because our exam was earlier and then you're essentially um i think i did like lit circles and just try to do like creative fun things that they wanted to do but um that engagement is law is really gone unless you have an exam if you have an exam you can really focus on you know just prepping them for it but if you don't have an exam i think engagement is just key like finding ways to build in fun things I remember when I taught summer school, I literally would show Harry Potter after we would read Harry Potter, which sounds crazy, 
but it kept them engaged. So maybe you don't have to show like a movie, but you can build in like games and activities, or um, if you have higher level kids or even lower level kids, I think are capable of this as well, but try to have like insightful conversations. I think that we all are engaged by thoughtful conversations and we all want to share our opinions in some capacity. Maybe some of us are afraid in certain environments to share or we worry about whether or not we'll sound smart enough or good enough. But if you can create a safe environment, then a lot of kids will likely enjoy that and it'll make the end of the year a little easier. Teaching high school is nice too because when they're taking their exams, I can do a lot of like reflection and preparation for the following year. So end of the year can be really, really nice. Next question is, what are some adjustments you made when going to a new school and the process of being observed as a teacher? What has your experience been? So I think every school has a culture and I think that has been probably the most shocking thing, leaving the DOE. I thought that every school believed in the workshop model. If you're in the DOE, you know what I'm talking about. It's always like, there were times where if I was observed, if, if I did not follow the workshop model, I knew I would not get a good score. But on Long Island, you don't have to follow the workshop model. A lot of times that can help, but if your students learn from a lecture, it's an honors class and they're engaged by it, go ahead. You know, it's just like a different dynamic overall towards teaching, which I find extremely freeing. Um, but it's almost like relearning like what is teaching and what is actually impactful and helpful. And in my experience, my teaching has generally remained the same. I think if anything, I'm a little bit more comfortable with, I used to feel like I can only talk, like the less I talk, the better. Let me talk for five seconds, you know? But if there are times where I'm like talking a little bit more, maybe like five minutes, sometimes 10 minutes, if I'm discussing something or whatever, I, I don't feel bad about that anymore. I feel like there's value sometimes in taking time to explain a concept. And I do think that kids still need that workshop, but I no longer feel that pressure of having my lessons look a very certain way. And in terms of observations, what's kind of funny is I remember at the last school I was at, I um, basically would get effectives and the highest score you can get is highly effective. And for one of my lessons, I knew it was really good. My principal told me it was really good, but she just gave me an effective. And coming to my new school, I've been getting a lot of highly effectives. And it seems like the culture is more of like, like, um, like letting me know the highly effective, you won't get a four, which is like a perfect all across the board, but maybe you get a 3.7, 3.5, so on. But I was getting threes before for the same lesson and being told like it's amazing or whatever. So I think a lot of it is really, really subjective. And a lot of it can just depend on like what the admin needs because I remember when I first started teaching period, I was getting highly effective just because of like how they were grading. And then they realized they were grading like too loosely and then I became effective but it didn't affect my tenure because my school liked me. They knew I was a competent teacher. They knew that I knew what I was doing. So um, I wouldn't let the ratings eat at you. I think it's more important to just know that you yourself are growing, to feel confident in that, and to understand the type of grader. So if I'm going up to someone and they give highly effective to everyone, then maybe they're highly effective isn't something I should like pat myself on the back about. Um, but if I'm getting, you know, a 3.7 from someone who's a really hard grader and like hardly gives highly effectives, I can know I, I did really well according to, again, this rubric, right? Um, and at the end of the day, it is subjective and it's most important, in my opinion, to find supportive admin. And I don't even care if um, you grade me super harshly, if you give me a three, as long as I feel supported by you and know that you have my back, you'll support me through tenure. And there are schools like that, but in the DOE, you really have to look and find a place where you feel supportive and even like the admin will will be there for some time. The last school I was at last year, the principal left after a couple months. So maybe I could have a good rapport. I can imagine someone having a good rapport with someone after a couple months, but if you're relying too much on the principal in that case and the school has high turnover and leadership, that is probably not the best school period anyway, unless they have a new admin come in who is a lot more secure and certain. I think I, I had read this question and I ended up kind of just answering here, but are your APs hard on you during observations? Do you have any tips for when being observed? I think I would just reiterate the same idea. And the only other thing I could say is it sounds so counterintuitive, but I remember that 
my observations generally or even just like not even the number right but the feedback or the the overall um the overall feedback I got from my observation was generally better once I changed my perspective. When you're a new teacher, you wanna look like you're like doing the cool thing, you wanna look like you're creating something innovative and amazing and whatnot, but at the end of the day, your job is to educate these children. So if you look at this lesson and you look at your kids and you think, will this really help them? Will they be engaged by this? Will they grow as a thinker, a writer, a person through this lesson rather than does it look good does it look flashy and exciting i guarantee your lessons will be better once i started thinking um what's lacking in here um how will this be too confusing how do i go back how do i include these types of students how do i serve them best it just took the focus away from you know impressing my ap and to helping the kids and ultimately that will help you the most when you're teaching I think the fact that this person sent me questions and wants to improve their teaching is already proof to me that they are um, a good teacher and someone who their students are lucky to learn from. I hope this was helpful to you. Teaching is such a journey and I can't believe I've been in it as long as I have been. Um, I always feel like a newbie because, you know, I, I did switch, switch my license my second year in ELA and I taught um, five years in um, special education. I think. Yeah, five years in special education, two years in ELA so far. So I do have some background and I've taught different places. I've taught in Queens, I've taught in Manhattan, residency in the Bronx, and now out on Long Island. So um, there is sometimes this feeling of insecurity, like what can I offer, what can I tell you? But um, I am really honored and humble that you even like asked me uh, my advice and I hope this was helpful. And if you guys have any other questions, let me know. I could talk about budgeting, as a teacher, I could talk about, you know, being a Christian and kind of balancing that as a as a teacher. I can talk about what to look for when interviewing, but let me know and then I will make the time to do this. I have been so busy and I probably should like go do the things I need to do. <laughs> but um, yeah, I thought I just came home from school. Let me just do this quick and I'm really glad I did. So hopefully I will be better with the uploads and I'll see you guys later.